Hello everyone. If you're here, that means one very important thing. You know what time it is. It's time to wine with Wanda. This is episode 10, June 10th, episode 10, and I'm so excited. Thank you for tuning in and taking this Instagram live wine tasting journey with me. Today we have a really special guest. I've been a fan of this family's wines for several years, ever since I was first introduced to them. So my special guest is second generation vintner, Anna Maria Ponzi. She likes to go by Maria. She's the co-owner, president, and director of sales and marketing for Ponzi Vineyards in Oregon's Willamette Valley, one of the hottest wine regions in the world. Her parents, Dick and Nancy Ponzi, they uprooted their family in the 60s to pursue their dream of producing world-class Pinot Noir. They are true pioneers. They were among the first to see the potential of this area to produce exceptional wines. And they founded their namesake winery in 1970. During a conversation with Maria, I'm gonna bring her in in just a moment. We're gonna taste two of their wines. Chardonnay Reserve 2016, which retails for about $42. And I'm also gonna taste with Maria, and I'm really excited, the Reserve Pinot Noir 2016, which retails for about uh, $65. So I see that she's there. We're gonna see if Instagram magic will work. Pressing the button. This is always the fun part. This is the beauty of live. It keeps it exciting and fun. So let's see if- I'm yes, here. Yes. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, Maria. How are you? Hi. Wow, I'm kind of washed out, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. You know, I always say it would be nice if we had like a whole glam squad and production team for these I IG haven't lives. I have not got that yet. <laughs> Wait for them to show up. <laughs> well, you look fabulous. And thank you for being here. It is great to be with you. Thank you for having us. It's Absolutely. Been, it's been so fun to watch your show and so many wonderful people online. So thank you for inviting oh, us. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm so glad you found the time because genuinely, ever since I was first introduced to your wines, it's been maybe at least four years now, I was instantly a fan and I really enjoyed exploring the whole range. And you have so much exciting news to share. This is going to be a great talk. But I do want to <laughs> talk with the fact that the winery will be reopening soon to guests. Yes, apparently we are opening. Um, I'm a little anxious about it. We're about two weeks away. So um, yeah, people are running around straightening up tables and chairs as we speak. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, we're excited, but nervous. It's a little bit like opening a whole new show because Absolutely. everything's so different. But, but yeah, we're anxious to, to get back in the game. Can you give a sneak peek of what the reopened experience will be like for people who may be but, coming to visit I mean, you? Yeah, I mean, for those who haven't visited us, we have a really beautiful venue and so much space around us. So we have a lot of outdoor space and the beautiful Avalana Vineyard just kind of nestled around us. So it's a beautiful vineyard view and then sweeping views to the valley. So um, lots of beautiful green everywhere you look. Um, we have a lot of social distancing, of course. We've got tables, space apart, and... Um, just the best people to serve and so we're really looking forward to having you know few people at a time we're not going to rush into it um not to lots of crowds but just you know two tops and four tops and just really give excellent service and take care of our folks so wonderful the yeah. other thing i want to congratulate you on is your new memoir and i love the title pinot girl a family yes. a region and industry so congratulations yay you have it <laughs> i should just put this up instead of my face i think it looks better <laughs> <laughs> so you really do have Pinot Noir in your veins. As I said, your parents, Dick and Nancy, they really had this vision that Willamette was the place to plant Pinot Noir. And they were really among the first to plant and produce Pinot Noir there. Yeah, we really were. I, I don't know what the count is, but I feel like we we're number three, like family number three. Um, but yeah, it was um, definitely very early on, 1968, when we moved up and plant, planted the, the first little vineyard row in 1969. And, and um, my sister, brother, and I we were all under the age of, I think, like six. So um, just a tiny little crew, um, not a lot of experience, actually no wow. experience. And so the story is really about our family, but it's really a tribute to 
all the Oregon wine pioneers who had this kind of um, really crazy idea to plant Pinot Noir in this very cold region, and a region that was completely unknown, uh, certainly to vinifera. And uh, so I just wanted to kind of recognize those people and honor them with this, um, with this book. So it, it turned out to be a memoir, I think only because it took me so long to, make, to, to actually create it and, <laughs> and produce it. So I'm getting older, so I just like, okay, got to get this done. It's a memoir. Well, hold it up again. <laughs> And for people that are just joining so they can see that beautiful cover of the book oh, let's okay. hold it up again right let's give Thank it you. the credit it deserves that's quite an i've been writing a book for about 15 years so yes. one day one hey, day keep <laughs> it on wanda it took me about 15 my girlfriend's tell me it's been more like 20 but i i, I don't think so i think 15. <laughs> and continue with the exciting news as you said it's not just a story of your family but it's the region and the industry and i know there's a big announcement about a new ava as well yeah well last week um i saw the crazy news we're dealing with these days um we finally got the approval for our laurelwood district ava which is something that my sister and i have been working on literally for about 16 years wow. uh, this is a really special uh thing for our, i think for the willamette valley because it's really a region or a district that's going to be all about the soil. There's a contiguous soil type called Laurelwood soil, okay. which is um, a really cool soil. It's Laurelwood and it's got uh, freshwater sedimentary on top, but we find it in just the northernmost part of the Willamette Valley within the Shehala Mountains AVA. And so it's just this really cool little area. And we felt like, you know, we've got to make something. This is a treasure. Nobody knows about it. And um, we have been farming this same land for, you know, since we've been here, so 50 years or so. And we really felt like this soil is what makes our wines different. You know, we've, we've all, we all know about Oregon wines. We know about Willamette Valley wines mm -hmm. now, right? And how they compare to everyone else's wines around the world. But within the Willamette Valley, we feel like we can get even more specific. And that's what's so really exciting about this new AVA finally getting approval. So that's wonderful. So yeah. starting what with, the, this 2020 vintage, will we see that on bottles? Yeah, um, we, well, we still have some wine, you know, holding it in barrel now. So I'm hoping you'll start to see it with even the 17, some of the 17s um, and the 18s as they start to come out with the Pinot Noir. So slowly, slowly, you'll start to see the, the, the AVA. So yeah, so that's really exciting. Congratulations. <laughs> And I'm so glad you mentioned Louisa. So your sister Louisa is the winemaker. And like your parents, she also seems to have been very inspired by Burgundy. I know she apprenticed at some wineries there and she also is the first, let me get this right, she was the first American woman to re receive her certificate in enology and viticulture in Bone. So yeah, she was uh, quite a pioneer herself. Um, she was kind of like the first of the, the wine women really to come around. Uh, she was in France in the 90s, has her degree there, as you mentioned, in viticulture and enology, and was um, really able to taste and drink and, and be around some of the great domains of that area. So while she was there, you know, enjoying her Pinot Noirs, um, <laughs> she was also, you know, like getting pulled away to these little areas called Merceau and Montrachet and, and tasting these gorgeous white wines. And um, at the same time, kind of scratching her head, a, way, a lot like my father did, you know, several years before about Pinot Noir scratching your head thinking, now why is it that we're in a cool area but we don't have these beautiful wines and why don't we make Chardonnay like, like they've got in Burgundy? So that mm -hmm. was really her, that's what inspired her to come back home and really focus on Chardonnay. Um, and my father obviously focused on Pinot and we kind of felt like we got Pinot in the blood, as you said, yeah. and we sort of have that great experience with that grape, but Chardonnay in those days, and this is like the early nineties was, was, you know, again, pretty unpopular to be honest. Mm. And, um, we couldn't really ripen it. So finding the right clone and putting it together with the right winemaker was what it was all about. And so uh, the timing was perfect. Louisa came home in the 1991 or sorry, 93. Um, and started making really beautiful Dijon style uh, Merceau and Montrachet kind of style uh, Chardonnays. And that's what we've got today. Beautiful, beautiful. So, you know, why don't we see how Louise is doing? Should we start with the Chardonnay? <laughs> I would love to, thank you. I need a drink today. <laughs> yes, so the Reserve Chardonnay, everyone. This is the 2016 vintage. It's $42. And I believe this is a blend of different vineyards, correct? Right. Yes. Um, yes, you have done your homework, Wanda. You <laughs> um, 
I know you were a journalism, uh, you have a journalism <laughs> degree. So See, I knew I had it all. You know, it, prepared. There's nothing, there's nothing to hide from you. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, so this is a blend of uh, two of our vineyards, so both estate-grown fruits. So this is the Avalana Vineyard. I mentioned that earlier. This is the mm -hmm. vineyard that surrounds the, this beautiful property we're on. Um, and then the Aurora Vineyard, which um, is really, you can see it from here. It's just a stone's throw away. Um, but two different vineyards really planted almost 20 years apart. So you have Aurora Vineyard, which is this older, more established Chardonnay site. Um, some of the, the most recent clones at that time were planted there. The earliest clones were planted there. And then again, Avalana, which we planted in 2016. So much, much later, uh, or sorry, I said 16, but 2006. So much younger vineyard. So what you sort of have here is this beautiful combination of an older site and a younger site, same soil, that beautiful Laurelwood soil. Um, and made from a winemaker who literally has been working on this for a couple of decades, you know, just crafting Chardonnay. Yeah. And so what you're tasting here um, uh, is, is, is pure Willamette Valley Chardonnay. Yeah. It is barrel fermented, which is interesting because a lot of folks don't even get that kind of oak, oakiness. Not at all. It's very subtle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautifully balanced with the fruit, beautiful, beautiful acidity, um, everything just right in alignment. And, um, you know, we just love these wines. I mean, and I have to tell you, to be frank, um, I never used to drink Chardonnay. My dad made Chardonnay forever, and I was like, anything, you know, I'd be like, anything but the Chardonnay. Um, yeah. And I'm like, dang, I'm drinking a lot of Chardonnay these days, so. <laughs> oh, that's um, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. But it has that kind of, um, you know, it's got a little flintiness, just a little minerality, a little salinity. It has just a, um, a hint of spice to it at the finish, I think. Um, the creme brulee, so that's where that kind of oak piece comes in. But just that it's more like a creme brulee, you know, it's a really nice, soft uh, kind of oak essence. So if there is at all. So Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. It's really a Chardonnay that takes you on a journey. It's not one note, but mm -hmm. everything is in balance. But Oh. Every few seconds, something else pops up, and it's really kind of an exciting Chardonnay, really. I'm telling you, Wanda, really here's the deal. You want to make a wine that just continues to seduce you, right? Yes. You don't want to just, <laughs> you don't want a one shot. You got to have it keep coming, right? And so I think that that's what is so beautiful about my sister's wines. Our wines are that they're multi-layered. They're just so complex. And I would like to say it's from uh, multiple vineyards that we blend together mm -hmm. that helps with that kind of complexity. But honestly, I think a lot of it is just the soil component that's coming through that has this really lovely kind of, you get that kind of spice piece going on. Absolutely. Too. And you'll see that consistently through our wines. But they're just this lovely kind of wines that, as you said, just kind of keep taking on a journey. That's yeah, awesome. really. I know what I'm going to be drinking tonight. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, here's the other thing. You got to drink more than one glass with these wines because I'm telling you, one glass is never enough. They just keep calling you back. <laughs> Do you have some favorite pairing, something that you really enjoy just nibbling on with this? Doesn't have to be fancy, just no, something well, that you really not, enjoy. I am not a fancy girl, so that's a good thing. Um, my lovely niece, who's amazing, amazing chef, made me, she asked, she's, she's a cook, she loves to cook, and I, I asked her, I said, can you make me dinner tomorrow, you know, when I Friday night, I said, "How about fried chicken?" She's like, "Fried chicken? That's so boring. Why would you want fried chicken?" I'm like, "Just really good buttermilk, you know, beautiful fried chicken, boneless, beautiful." And I paired it with Chardonnay. And you know what? Heaven, heaven, heaven. I could Gorgeous. see that because this has enough weight and acidity and crispness to really, and a little yeah. bit of spice as well. Great combination. Mm -hmm. Someone I mean, is asking, can... "What kind of oak do you use? Is it a okay. French oak?" Yeah, so this great, is a French great, oak. Great. Everything in the cellar is French oak. Um, we're working with several different coopers, but most of it's Francois Frere. Yeah. Wonderful one. Well, well you know, before we go... No, please, go ahead. Oak. Well, I was going to mention, a lot of this is neutral oak. So it's, um, you know, older barrels. So that's, again, why you don't get that heavy oak, you know, kind yeah, of... Yeah, it's really just kind of cradling the wine, but it's not dominating it. So I yeah. highly recommend yeah. the Chardonnay. You know, before we uh, get into the Pinot Noir, there is a great quote from your memoir. And people are <laughs> wanting to know where they can buy the book, actually. Where oh, is it available? Well, you can buy it actually anywhere. Um, you can even buy it on our site. And I'll sign it for you if you go to ponzivineyards.com. Uh, if you buy it from us directly, I'd love to sign the books. Um, but if not, you can get it at, you know, your local bookstore, which, of course, I'm really promoting local these days, especially with when stuff, you know, kind of struggling through these last Absolutely. few months. So I, I would say 
go local before you go Amazon, but you can go Amazon. But like I said, go local first, <laughs> but it's everywhere. Great, great. Thank so you. and I just picture you have a quote from the book where you're talking about the reaction that you and your sister would have when your parents described Pinot Noir. And I, first of all, I was thinking when I was a little girl, I was pretending to have a tea party. You were probably doing like pretend <laughs> wine tastings, you and Louisa. <laughs> We probably wanted to have a tea party and we had to have a drink of wine. That's probably how it went. <laughs> but I'm going to read the quote, unless you have it in front of you, but I can. No, go for it. Okay, they described Pinot Noir as a thoughtful wine, saying something about how it didn't call attention to itself. Instead, it quietly seduced the drinker with its hints of black cherry, mild cigar and cedar. They would go on and on about how one sip invited complex flavors into the mouth and how hints of earth, mushroom, plum, meat, and truffles could be detected. It all sounded pretty weird to us. <laughs> we just giggled and made faces when they described how wine tasted like food. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's all this food stuff? To, why are we talking about food and you're drinking something? It didn't, it made no sense to us whatsoever. <laughs> you know, so... I, I still today kind of I'm always thinking about how that is so funny how everyone has to compare wine to something else you know True. it's like it, it 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 smells like tobacco it tastes like tobacco it's like yeah well it could just I don't know smell or taste like Cabernet too I don't know <laughs> was there a I moment for you when it finally hit you because I know you went off like I said you had your journalism career you were living in Boston I believe what was the yeah. moment for you where you're like you know what I kind of want to make this a bigger part of my life and run the company and co-own this with my sister. When did that yeah. all happen for you? Well, you know, I was, I was working a uh, publishing house in Boston and, you know, I wanted that East coast experience. Cause I, here I was always, always on the West coast farm girl. So I was really after being, that was a real, probably four or five years I was on the East Coast and I was just like not feeling like it was my groove. It just didn't feel right. You know, too many people, whatever it was. And, um, I called home and this is like in the late 80s um, and this is when my father is being hailed as like one of the world's greatest winemakers wow. by Robert Parker who was like the guru at the time and getting a lot of press and attention and here I'm like going what my dad's a winemaker people know about him you know because <laughs> he was just my dad you know and yeah I'm trying to make some wine but the end was that uh, when I called home and I said, what's going on? They said, you know, things are really kind of getting busy here and we could use your help. And I thought, well, shoot, maybe I should go back. And um, so I, I did. And it was after a year, actually, Louisa and I traveled together. We backpacked around the world. That was in a day when you could go all oh, over the, wow. the world. Yeah. And we lived on a shoestring and just had great adventures. And that was sort of the, the last hurrah before, you know, coming back and being chained to your family business. So I'm really always grateful that I had that year to just kind of uh, get away from everything before I got home. But then, then at home, you know, you get back to the seasons. And I think, again, that's what's so lovely mm -hmm. about this, this industry that we're in is that every year is different. And that's as true. a, as as a, as a grape grower, you're able to kind of see that change and the start every single year and the finish every year. And it's just something that I realized I really missed from my childhood. So, so I came back and been doing it ever since, but it's been a great ride. I can't, I, I've just been very fortunate. And I read somewhere that you and Luis are actually the only winery solely owned and operated by second generation sisters in the country. Absolutely. Yeah, we are. And um, I think we're the only sister owned winery with the exception of the McBride sisters. And so, wow. Uh, yeah. So we're, yeah. we're pretty rare. I mean, you know, Wanda, there are many women in this industry still. True. And so, and there, and so for many years, not only was it male dominated, but it was also the boys, right? It was yeah. the, the sons that would come up and take over the domains and whatnot. So um, it is unusual for women to, to take that next seat. And uh, so we're really excited now. We're seeing a lot of women in wine come up. Uh, Luis and I have both been involved in trying to mentor a lot of women in this industry and give them a place, whether it be in the business, on the business end or, you know, in winemaking or in the vineyards, whatever it might be. It's wonderful. I love it. Well, with that said, I think I am thirsty for the Pinot Noir. <laughs> I'll serve. I'll show the bottle to everyone again. It's the Reserve Pinot Noir 2016. Yep. And retails yeah. for about sixty-five dollars. Yeah. Um, you'll be hard to find oh. them for sixty. 
by these days, you guys, though, you can probably get great deals on these wines right now. Oh, but okay. <laughs> just so you know. Don't um, pay everyone. There might be a sale somewhere. <laughs> just saying. Um, this is a beautiful example of, uh, I think, um, of mm. laurel wood soils. Again, I'm going to get back to this. This is These are all estate-grown uh, uh, fruit that's in here. We have our vineyards that we were planted early on, so vineyards that were planted in the 70s and the mid 80s. Um, so you're getting really uh, beautiful fruit from that soil that I was talking about earlier, the laurel wood soil, which is so rare in this, in this valley. Uh, so it's about three different vineyards all over 20 some years of age. Um, and Luis is really her, her expertise. I mean, and truly she is really a master of the wines from this region. She's been doing it probably some of the longest, uh, she's been making wines 30 some years. So you oh know, my goodness. she's got wow. a lot of experience behind her. So I think that these are wines that are just really well made. Again, you're gonna, when you taste this wine, you're gonna see that really beautiful balance with the acid and the fruit. Um, she doesn't try to make it, again, like my father was saying, as I, as I put in my book, but she's not trying to be showy with these wines. Mm -hmm. They're just supposed to be really elegant, lovely, interesting wines with a lot of dimension to them and complexity. Um, and that's kind of always been kind of the, the house style in a way. What I like about it, there is a concentration, but it's not bulky. It's still very Pinot Noir, very elegant. Mm -hmm. Still right. has that grace, that, that lift that you always want in a Pinot Noir. Absolutely. But yeah. don't you love that little velvet? It has like this velvet texture to mm -hmm. it. It's got that silky kind of smooth texture to it that, again, um, it just kind of wants you to keep drinking it. Yes. <laughs> Brings you back oh, I think more. I have a lot of drinking uh, ahead of me tonight. <laughs> These will be hard to say no to. <laughs> Good. Good. So do you have a favorite food that you pair? I mean, to me, I'm like, this is a great, with, it, with the steak. I mean, just yeah. beautiful. Yeah. A beautiful, even something, again, I tend to go for like a tenderloin. I like a really mm -hmm. beautiful steak like that. But certainly, I mean, you can put it with something even with a little bit of pepper, a little heat with it. Because yeah. Then, doesn't have a lot of uh, heat. It does, the tannins are soft on this. So I think it's a really nice wine for that. I mean, certainly lamb, uh, quail, anything like that is a real, people love to pair Pinot with, with something like that. Um, I, again, at my place, I'm, I'm pretty casual. It, I just feel like Pinot Noir is so versatile too. It really like, is. You know, I mean, I, you could even put it with a pasta dish. If you yeah, want from it. fish like, to chicken, pasta. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. and I mean, forever, you know, salmon has always been a great pairing with these wines from this region, and I, I think there's something to that because they don't they don't take away from that. Um, from, oops, oh, that wasn't me. I'm sorry. You know, I live in the heart of Manhattan. So. Where do you live? I got birds <laughs> chirping out here. <laughs> I am in the heart of uh, of Manhattan. I'm in uh, in Harlem. So yes, I'm always nervous when I do this. Like, please don't let the sirens go by. <laughs> You just never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I love it. I love the flavor. It's all good. You know? Sometimes I'm sitting outside and the birds are chirping so loudly. It's like, okay, this is embarrassing. I got to go inside. <laughs> <laughs> so I always like to have a little fun with my guests, you know, because I'm a little corny. So like, why with Wanda? Why don't I let people whine about something? Like, is there some pet peeve or some wine misconception out there that you just want to yell enough already? So this is your chance to whine about it. <laughs> and let people know well you know what do i i just i have a real problem with this kind of snobbery around wine ah. I, I just i i just don't get it um i was raised around wine i know all i know are wine people and people who produce wine and they are some of the nicest warmest thoughtful kind people without any ego I mean, the real, you know, like, I mean, the folks that are really in the dirt and really, you know, take it from the vineyard into the bottle, those are some of the wonderful people. So I've always been sort of, again, this is sort of going back to my childhood, sort of mystified as to why there's so many snobs and so many egos in this industry, because it's not what this is about. You know, let's get down to it. It's about wine. It's about gathering. It's about getting together with your friends and your family and telling stories and laughing or shoot, maybe crying. You know, these days, <laughs> maybe a lot of crying going on. You Absolutely. Know? But, but whatever it is, it allows you to just speak and to share. And I think that that's something really special about this product. And it's another reason why I love, 
you know, being in it. And so I'm always like, if you're going to be a snob, I don't know, go play somewhere else. I want to play with the nice people. So. <laughs> I love it. I think that's one of my favorite responses because it's so true. That's why one of the reasons I enjoy this so much, right? Every winemaker that I've met, they have this connection to the land. And I think that instantly humbles you because no matter what you think yeah. you're in control of, like you said, each year, each harvest is different. And that is a very humbling yeah. thing. And that te tends to manifest itself in different ways in your personality. So you said it so well. It is so true. And just as soon as you get an ego, you know, then you're going to get a frost. Something's mm -hmm. going to happen. <laughs> Yes. Well, that 100 points is going to go down to 75 and you're going to be like, what just happened? So be careful. Keep, keep it grounded, you know, stay in line. And uh, yeah, I've, I've learned that over the years. And, and I, I, love, uh, I love every part of the business. I do miss these last few days, you know, or several days of not being in the market, you know, and not being able to talk to our, our fans and, and uh, the people who have supported us, our buyers, our wholesalers retailers, the restaurateurs. I mean, it's been tough because I really love that connection with the, the, that part of this industry. Um, I think it's so important. You know, there's a lot of people who get into the wine biz and they think it's just all about putting their name on the bottle, but mm -hmm. you know, it's so much more than that. And it is, um, it's just this really beautiful thing. And it goes, it goes to, uh, I don't know, to so many different levels. So it's a great thing. If you can make money from it, it's even better. Even better. <laughs> Oh, well, Maria, thank you for your time and being so gracious. Oh, thank and thank your parents for having that vision, you know, and packing uh, you kids up on this adventure. Congratulations on the book, Pinot Girl. <laughs> Congratulations on the new Laurelwood AVA. Thanks, Wanda. Thank and the you reopening so much. that's coming soon. Thanks. Lots of good stuff happening. I just want to toast you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Here's to better days ahead. Thank you for staying positive and for bringing me on and for continuing to drink great wines. Oh, thank you so much, Maria. Cheers. <laughs> Be Ciao. safe, everyone. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs>